Well, there you are. You weren't here last week. Missed a good episode. Glad to have you back. I have lots of work to do. I'm going to round up my cut and Dougie. Head to work. Let's go, Rooster. Cut and Dougie. Yeah, you're not a robot, man. You just, what are you doing in there? That's creepy. Flizz and flaz and flizzoo. Coming to get you, Barbara. This time on Graveyard Cars, the ghouls gang up on the 1970 Challenger RT 446 pack to install the hood and drivetrain for this B7 beast. That is, if the engine passes Mark's original equipment inspection. Somebody really is going to like this. I'll tell you who's not the guy that owns the car. Mark confronts Will after discovering that he didn't paint the Challenger's white stripe. Don't forget to put the stripe on. And Tony D'Agostino won't go anywhere until he finds his wife's car. But will he be ready for what he discovers? In Springfield, Oregon, Mark Warman, together with his skilled ghouls, it has been established that the unburied dead are coming back to life. Bring classic Mopar muscle cars back from the dead to look like they did the moment they left the factory floor. Because of the obvious threat, this station will remain on the air day and night. Our 1970 Dodge Challenger RT. This is a B7 blue car. It has a white bumblebee stripe black interior. Originally, it was a 383 four-speed car. The customer wants me to convert it over to a 446 pack four-speed car. So that's what we've been in the process of doing. The drivetrain is all built out. We've been assembling what we can on the car until the drivetrain was done. Uh, the other day, we got the deck lid on it. We're starting to do the final sheet metal. So the last piece of final sheet metal is going to be our hood. That's a three-guy job. It's two guys, one on each side, one at the front holding the balance. It's just better to be safe than sorry. Rooster? Yes, Mark. OK. Alrighty. What? Where are you OK, race straight up in the air. These hoods are big and they're heavy, so it is good to have three people doing it because it's very easy for a hood to jump or move a little bit and chip a fender. So it gets a little tense, but when you have three people just taking your time, making sure you're doing a good job, it usually goes fairly quick. Now, Will, I have a question for you. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Anyway, I was working with the greenhorn. We were putting the deck lid on. Something jumped out at me. I couldn't help but notice. What's that? There's no bumblebee stripe on it. The car's a bumblebee car, remember? Not like a decal? No, it's not like a decal. It's a painted on stripe. V9W to be specific, because it's supposed to be white. Now, I'm just wondering why you didn't put it on there. Because it's supposed to go on underneath the paint. Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> what, Will? Why Can you lift up in the front a little bit? Why didn't you tell me? Tell you that it's supposed to get a stripe on it? How am I supposed to know if it gets a painted stripe? Be because the same reason every other car, the broadcast sheet hanging on the side of the car. What do you think, there was a guy on the assembly line, handsome guy, looked a little bit like Tom Cruise, running up and down the assembly line telling people, oh, don't forget to put a stripe on. Don't forget to well, put how am I supposed to know? on. That's a build sheet. You just put that it's on the there. Word build. No, I did not. That's been on there since the car went through the metal shop. <laughs> it's not been on there once, sir. Not one time. You literally just put that on there. Why would I just put that on there? I I'm Because it's part you. of your game. No, there is it's no part, game. It's all a game with okay, you. Okay, can we just close the hood? That broadcast sheet, I haven't seen that. He probably literally today printed that up and then threw it on there. Because I had no clue that we were supposed to drop a stripe on it. And those are like things that he, like when he's walking through the shop, say, oh yeah, don't forget or give me a heads up. Because I have no fender tag, I have no broadcast sheet. The only thing I know is it goes B7. I'll have to do a little last minute dial in on it. Push the back edge of that hood down. Yeah, I just got to drop the back of the hinges down a little bit. Okay. Uh, the hood looks good. It needs a little bit more tweaking. We leave that for Mark to do. You know, he's a perfectionist at it. He's actually really good at it. So he'll uh, dial this thing in, but color looks great. Everything matches like it should. Looking uh, looking amazing. Oh. Okay, are we done? You're dismissed. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, you're not done. The V9W stripe, as you know. The white stripe. Next time, read the broadcast sheet. But the, put a broad. There was a broadcast sheet. It was not there. I've done this whole car. 
from start to finish. Listen, I've no made mistakes too. I didn't realize at the time I was a young, I was a greenhorn. I didn't realize that the way they did it was like before the car ever got purple or blue. If it got a bumblebee stripe on it, they painted the back of the car almost to the front edge of the deck lid. Then they did a reverse mask, masked off the rally stripes, painted the car, pulled it off, and they were done. So when you run your finger across a factory stripe, if it was brand new, right what? You wouldn't feel the line. Of course you'd feel the line. No. We're not clear coating over it, it's an enamel paint. Can I finish now? If you ran your finger over it, you would notice that the white paint is lower than the other paint, okay? Because the other paint's on top of it. That would make it higher, okay? And in this case, it's gonna be reversed. Right. So all I need you to do is keep that millage way, way down. Absolutely. Okay, so at the very leading edge, I want one coat of clear. I don't want three coats of polyurethane clear. I want one, and it has to be clean, unlike most paint jobs, so I can get that I can take down care of it. flat. I can take care of it. Now, I will get you the original engineer drawings, if that would help. Sure. You'll have to be able to read. I do. Okay, good. If you couldn't for some reason read. Are we done? There's a yellow car out back for the factory bumblebee stripe on it. That'd probably be easier for you than reading all those pesky numbers. 16 this, 8 that. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying? You see it. what I mean? So the question is, did I hang the broadcast sheet on the car after the fact? I'm not going to confess to anything. I'm not going to deny anything. Let me ask you this. How can Scooby-Doo talk? Go-kart Mozart checking out the weather chart. What's that? JFK. Nobody's ever going to figure out, you know, what was it Oswald acting alone? Was it was it the Russians? Was it was it the mob? You know? Well, what's the question? This car could come with a new 360 four-barrel V8 at extra cost. It was designed with performance in mind with heavy-duty bearings, dual exhaust, high-performance camshaft, and high-load valve springs with surge dampeners. This car came standard with a three-speed transmission, or you get a four-speed manual. Your other option was to get the column or console-mounted torque flight. And to top it all off, it came with an attractive selection of vinyl roof options, including green, white, gold, or black which makes the 1974 CUDA our Corpse of the Week. I do have a car out here at Graveyard Cars uh, that uh, my wife and I, Cindy, got from Mark a couple years ago, and it's been waiting in line. So I figured while I was out here in some downtime, I'd start uh, looking for uh, Cindy's Challenger to see how they're making out with it. Mark told me that the car would either be ready for paint or have some paint work done to it already. I couldn't find it in the building. I went outside, I, I couldn't find it outside, which I'm happy about. I would have been pissed if it was outside still, and I still haven't found it. It's not this again. The one building I haven't checked for where the Challenger may be is this one right behind me. Well, I see two Challengers. I was inside with Tony's car. He rolls in, you know, instantly wants to jump into things. How's the car look? What'd we replace? What'd we repair? So I kind of gave him a brief overview of what we've done, where the car's at right now, in a realistic time frame of when the car is going to be painted. There were smaller issues kind of hit, hit and miss, but even with the Bondo that's on there, you can still see the bare metal underneath it. It's not thick. I found the car, a little disappointed. It wasn't as far along as I would have hoped for or expected, but happy to see that there is progress. and. What's been done looks like it's done good. Not, not that that was ever a concern. The car was a solid car to start with, which made it really nice because Tony really wanted to keep all the original sheet metal on the car. So we did have to replace the rear trunk floor, but that was it. The, uh, the rest of the car just had some pinholes. We were able to go through, do a little welding here and there, and maintain the rest of the original sheet metal. My main thing was to try to keep as much of original sheet metal and metal on the car, and they did that. I was happy to see the driver's floor pan had some pinholes in it, and they were able to braze or weld them up and get them instead of replacing the panel. That was important to me. I guess the only panel really got replaced was the uh, trunk floor with a one piece, so I can live with that. Original quarter panels on the car and fenders, that's nice. That's what I want. I, not against the repro, but I'm more of an OE original guy like that. So, so that side looks really good. Um, this side had a little more damage on it, but it's all Damage or... 
Just little repairs, little things to fix. Okay. You know, it was a California car. The roads are good over there. There's no snow, nothing to deal with. So it was a good car to start with as opposed to if it was from back east. Uh, this is the third car that is just a solid car to start with. The Daytona was a great car and Buck's Challenger that we did was a great car. So this is the third one where when the car comes back from the dipper and it's clean, it moves through the shop a lot quicker. According to Mark, we're shooting for sometime in the late winter, early spring for it to be done. So I mean, Cindy can come out and check out the car. So keep your fingers crossed. And so we're doing this 100% original? Duh. See what I'm getting at? We are doing 100% original. I'm ch I'm changing around a couple factory options though. Tony's Mr. Original. That's awesome. I got no problems with that. The problem comes in is where he wants it gorgeous and beautiful and all original, he's still going to pick and choose what features need to be better than the original ones. Maybe he's not the purest that we all think he is. Okay, so I'm not going to cut him off this car, right? Sure you are. It's not that. It's okay. Well, you I can't pick and choose. Yeah, I can. No, you can't. So you want this whole thing buffed out also? Oh yeah. Factory didn't I want it to be a mirror, I know. Well, you could order show car furniture and I'm optioning that. You know, I'm gonna pick and choose what I'd like and, and I can go with a little bit better shiny paint, unless he's worried about hiding something. Okay, my ghoulish friends. Earlier I talked to you about the 1974 Cuda. Let's see if you were paying attention. Which color of vinyl top was not available for our Barracuda or Cuda in 1974? Was it green, parchment, or gold? Find out after the break. So which vinyl top option color was not available for Barracuda or Cuda in 1974? If you answered parchment, you were right. And I'm not surprised because you probably knew that parchment was used on some of Plymouth's other models, such as the satellite and the dusters. And that's just to name a few. So right now we're getting ready to install the drivetrain in our 1970 Dodge Challenger RT. I wanna start out by just talking about some of the things that make this unique and correct for a 1970 Challenger. The Challenger started life as a real RT, 383 four-speed car. The owner always wanted a 446-pack four-speed car. So he commissioned me to restore the car, but when we go back together with the engine, transmission, rear end, suspension, make it exactly the way a 446 pack car would have been in 1970. So you guys ready to go to school? Uh-huh. Yeah. Let's start with the clutch and fan blade assembly. The gentleman who owns this car wants it to be an A34, uh -huh. which also means it has max cooling heavy duty max cooling, which means it gets a 26 inch radiator, a fan shroud, this fan blade, uh -huh. and this clutch fan. Uh -huh. The 2806070, that is the correct fan from 1968 to 1971. That is a correct reproduction of the very, very difficult to find in good shape fan. Cause it's at the front of the engine. It's sucking stuff through that radiator for 50 years. It gets a living tar bead out of it. Yeah. So to find nice ones, this was a great investment for Tony to start making. This unit right here is correct for our 1970. What is this item called? Fuel vapor separator. Fuel vapor oh, separator. Oh, oh Rooster's boy. coming in. <laughs> oh, Dougie coming in, that's right. This is the intake side, it's three eighths. It's the intake side goes back to the fuel tank. The fuel gets sucked into here and then pumped out to here and up to the carburetors. But there's excess fuel, there's excess vapors. What happens to those? This is an early version of emission control. This little quarter inch return line goes back all the way to the tank and puts all that extra stuff back in the tank again. So it can come back up this and be reused again. So it really is kind of an efficient little setup. Yeah. They didn't use it on the 383 slant six of small box, but they did use it on this. So the other things that I harp on you all the time about is making sure that we have the right nuts and the right bolts, right? So how do we know that this little bracket that holds the alternator and these bolts that hold it in place are right? Any bolt would hold them this long enough to work, right? Mm -hmm. We look carefully Carefully, there's some things we'll notice. Don't take for granted that this alternator is just on here. This is not an air conditioning car. You couldn't get air conditioning on a 444 speed anything. So whether there was a six pack on top of the engine or there was a four barrel on top of it, you couldn't get a 440 or four speed in air conditioning. So that's already off the charts. If it was air conditioning, this would be a dual pulley. It would take two belts. So this is the correct single pulley. It is also black in color. That is correct. 
you'll notice this bolt right here that goes through the correct replica heater hose bracket. This is the correct one that they started life with, that most of the guys, when they change these hoses out, threw this on the ground and it never got put back on. This is original. That bolt, you see what's in the middle of that bolt? The H? That's a Highland bolt. Okay. That is the correct original Highland bolt. Look at this one with the serrated top on it with these little teeth in it. That is the correct bolt. It's very short and it's specific. It's made that way to go into that hole. See the word top here so you can't get it upside <laughs> down because I know where you're from. <laughs> and then down here you'll see the L5. That is the correct bolt that holds the lower part, the pivoting part of the bracketry. When was that car built? Uh, September 2nd. Of what year? 1969. Very good. So that means everything on this engine, if it's dated, should be dated before that date, right? Or right. correctly concurrent with that date. Spark plug wires. These are replicas of the original Chrysler Corporation wires, the black with the yellow writing. If we know that January, February, and March would be the first quarter of 1969, what quarter should these spark plug wires be? The second or the Closest third, right? to the production date without going over. It's like the price is right. The okay. closest date without so the going over it, the third quarter, that's right. And so when you look very carefully right here, what do you see? H3Q69. Third quarter of 69. That's how accurate it has to be. These are the correct heater hoses with the correct part numbers on them. This is the correct upper radiator hose with the part number on it. This is the correct lower radiator hose with the part number on it. So on that side, that's about it. Just a couple things real quick over here. Since this is going into an A34 car, it has a 410 gear ratio. Mm -hmm. Mopar made it mandatory that any of their axle package cars that had a gear ratio of 3.55 to one or lower got a power steering cooler. That's called being accurate. So that is a power steering cooler that was mandatory with it. Also, the other thing that's mandatory. This breaks? This breaks. Oh. Last couple of things. You'll notice that the dip stick level indicator <laughs> is orange, but yet the dipstick tube is natural finish. You know why that is? I don't. It's the same reason that the tri-rib, one, two, three, tri-rib, PCV valve and grommet are also hemi orange because the engine was painted together at the factory with the exhaust manifolds. Look at the spark plugs. You see the orange paint on the spark plugs? That is exactly how they were painted. You may not like it now and you may say it's butchering, but that's the way the factory did it. The hose wasn't on it, which is why the hose has no orange paint. Also, there's no clamp here. That's not supposed to have a clamp here. People put clamp on, that's not right. The indicator, that was not in the engine, <laughs> and this was not in the engine when it got painted because the motor mounts weren't on the engine, and this bolts on through the bolts that hold the motor mount on. So since the motor mount wasn't on when it got painted orange, neither was the tube. However, they well, wanted that, the top yeah. of it to look right, so instead of just painting this handle, the factory actually dipped it in orange paint and brought it back out again, and then they would go and they would hang and dry, and when it was time to put them in an engine, they'd grab it and put it in. So what yeah. did we do? What happens when you dip paint into something and pull it out? Right here. You're gonna have a little drip right there on the end. So here you see, we actually have the drip. We've simulated the drip. Okay, last thing, we'll check the manifolds. Oh, what has happened? <laughs> What's wrong with your face, Dad? <laughs> what happened? What? What? 2806-800. What's no, wrong? it's 2806-900. Let's just take a look and see what's wrong with that. A 2806, let's go back here and find it. That is a B and C body, 440 and 383 HP manifold for the right-hand side. And this is a 70 E body. You're Wait. really smart. It is the right-hand side. Yeah, and it is an exhaust manifold, but it's for a B-body. Oh. Let's take a look at the other side. 2843, 392. Well, hey, one thing is you're consistent. That is the left-hand side. It is. A 440 and 383 HP, 68 and 69 B-body. Uh -huh. So somebody really is gonna like those. I'll tell you who's not. The guy that owns a car. Boys and ghouls, welcome to another round of You Make the Call. We have three amazing Chrysler legendary engines here. You have your choice. 440 Super Commando putting out 375 horsepower. 383 Super Commando putting out 335 horsepower. Gets a little better mileage in that one. Or the legendary 426 Hemi. Dual four carburetors probably doesn't get good gas mileage, but it does make 425 horsepower. Which of these engines would you pick 
if money was no object. Go to GraveyardCars.com. You can also go to Twitter and Facebook and cast your vote of which one of those engines you'd choose if money was no object. Next week, live on Facebook, I will announce what you chose. See how I did the boys and ghouls thing? I kind of played up on that a little bit. I know that's from the Crypt Keeper, but he's been dead for a long time. So far, the 1970 Challenger RT 440 six-pack is cruising through the shop. But after installing the hood, this B7 beast hit a speed bump when Mark discovered a missing white stripe. And Mark's inspection of the 440 six-pack found a big mistake that may put his cousin Dougie in the doghouse. Still to come, the ghouls install the drivetrain for the 70 Challenger RT. And Will still needs to make good on the B7 Chally's missing stripe. But Mark has a surprise lined up for his number one painter. That is, if Cousin Dougie doesn't drop the ball. So we got lucky and had a pair of uh, orange, already pre-painted exhaust manifolds with the right part numbers on them. So Doug's got those installed on the engine now. We're ready to put the drivetrain in. So you are standing by, good. So what we gotta do is we gotta locate these front leaf spring hangers <clears throat> into the holes near the torque box area, okay? Bring okay, the front of the that, axle okay. up a little. Yep, just like that. And I'll come down just a little bit. Okay. Beautiful. All right, we got everything in there. The nuts are in position and loose, that's good. We need to lower the car down and put the rear actual shackles in place. That's good. How we doing, guys? All right, got it. Okay. Got some. Okay, start the nut and the washer. That's all you got to do. Good job, guys. Looks good. Let's go ahead and do the engine and transmission. And then we can put the wheels and tires on it. Call it a morning. Right. Get her done. Yeah. Done. Okay, so here's what we're doing right now. Mark has told me what the color is that goes on the back of this car. Um, I just like to come in, double check, especially for the fact that Mark has went and purchased the original books from 1970 and 1971 uh, from PPG. It's a great thing to have. Right now we have a lot of the photocopies, but these are the actual originals. So we flip through, find the 1970. Um, we have the W1, which is the white. So that's our white that we'll be using. And one of the best parts about this is when you go to the back, it actually lists what everything was for with these colors, whether it be a low gloss finish for a dash, a suede finish, what type of car it went on. With this, it's super easy. We have our 1970 Dodge exterior colors, striping colors right here. Here's our list of colors they used. Here's the white 2033, which I believe is a Spinnaker white. So at this point, we can just go to the computer, type in 2033, and that'll give me the formula to use. Okay, let's do it. I'm gonna run the hoist, load her in there, load her in there. I'm gonna give you the eyeball line. I can usually call it within a millimeter. All right. Can't tell your colors, but apparently measurements. Go this way with the front of it. Stop there. You probably could need maybe an inch forward. Not much. Right there. Usually if this pose touches that support, that's about the right forward for it. Okay, lowering down. Second floor mannequins and apparel. We're gonna hit on the passenger side. Kick it over a little bit. Yeah, it can go over about a half an inch. Right there. Okay. Let me get that, Pete. Okay. Oh, oh. Hold on, Mark. Okay. Okay, lowering. Oh, oh. Good. Oh, there's a little bit. I 
Yeah. It'll pull it all down. Pull it straight out the front? Yep. There you go. So right now, everything yeah. is installed as far as the engine. It's completely restored and installed. Pass on transmission, did the Hemi four speed. It's all done and ready to go. We'll have to do our assembly line markings on it. That's all that'll be left there. Rear end is in place, which is great. So now they're just making final connections. We'll put the wheels and tires on it, let it down. Then we can get it moved over to Will so he can put the V9W stripe on the back that he seemed to have not been able to read the broadcast sheet for. So, and Dougie, and Dougie. Yeah, Mark. Hi, Dougie. Hi. That he does that. That's. <laughs> Hello. What's wrong? <laughs> Hi, Mark. So once we have it all brought up here, like we do, we have our amount already put in at 15 ounces. You just go to label. has everything in it, so now we're good to go mix it. Hey ghouls, true or false? The 1974 Barracuda and Cuda came standard with a 318 two-barrel V8. Think you know? Find out after the break. So, did the 1974 Barracuda and Cuda come standard with a 318 two-barrel V8? Of course, the answer is true. The newly available 360 four barrel V8 would cost you a few more pennies though, and it replaced the 340 and featured a windage tray and a shot peen crankshaft. If you didn't know, now you know. A week or two ago, I sent out a pallet of uh parts for my car, uh, for Cindy's car, the Challenger that Mark's been working on. I have a uh, front end uh, sub assemblies, uh, upper to lower control arms with disc brakes, all beautifully detailed and ready to go. Same thing with a rear end, I got a eight and three quarter rear end, and also some other parts that just sort of accumulated throughout the years that might as well use them up on this car, so. Now these parts that you're looking at here, while some may look at a pile of junk, these are completely, a lot of them, most of them are restored already. They came off a car that was already restored, or, somehow you inherited it. Or gonna go on to a car, you know. It never happened. Yeah. But they're really nice pieces. I just did a quick look. We just got it unpackaged. So first thing I guess to say is the uh, upper and lower control arm assemblies we got. Yeah. They've been uh, correctly They're finished. just dirty from sitting around, Yeah, right? just duck, duck. This actually has Cosmoline on it. Yes. That's actually Cosmoline. Yes. That's why it looks so right. You got your eccentric bolts, which you have a beautiful black phosphate finish to them. Those are NOS. A lot, of, oh, they were. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's and here's nice. the uh, 70 E-body only uh, shock plate yep. to drops the shock down lower. Yep. And you got your front sway bar on here with the correct Highland bolts. And they're actually, what's funny is they're going the right direction too with the <laughs> right cap. That came yep. right off of something and went right back on. That looks really nice. Uh, you got the tie rod ends assemblies. They're correct. With you got the, your drag link with your tie. And that looks like it was a natural finish, so we might have to clean it up a little from some mm -hmm. just surface yeah. rust on it. It's, it's been sitting. Like I said, I, I stowed this stuff away, and you try to keep it in the best environment. But Well, it's, there's moisture in the air. Yeah. Were these NOS, these sleeves? Yeah, the sleeves. They were. don't look like they've been treated. They look like they started live. Yeah. Wow. All right, I'll set that there. You got your leaf springs look like they're already done. Yep, they're the 024, 034, you know, 440 slash Hemi. Now, something I would have to run to the book and look at, but I bet you do know. I thought that this was for a, a four-speed, got yellow ones, but the automatics were the regular. So any no, 440, 440, 446 back yeah. in Hemi. Yeah. Automatic or four-speed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You okay there? You're all hunched over. No, no, I'm looking. I'm oh. okay. Okay, okay. I don't know. I don't know. You look like you're I'm getting looking. ready to fly. I'm getting close. I need to get my glasses. Get your glasses. Go get your glasses. We'll keep, look at this beauty. Isn't that nice? It's even got all the bolts in Gorgeous. it. Gorgeous. Yeah, it's well finished. 
Very natural. Look at everything on us restored right. Got the correct bolt too. This is your rear axle housing. It's already done, it looks the like. I don't want to tear a bunch of it apart because it's all packed kind of somewhat decently. Right, it's got the pumpkin in it all, so it's all It set. does. Yep, sure grip. I got your strut rods there. So yeah, we have everything. Where's your K member? We're gonna, we're, we're gonna do your K member. Yeah, the K member in the yeah. car. Okay. Because that's, that's right. dated, you know? That's right. So you want us to use all these lines. Is your car getting undercoated? I don't think so, no. So we'll just clean that off of there yeah. with some thinner or something. Yeah. Ooh, look at the wiper motor. Well, this may be near the uh, rear uh, It could be house. where it got the mandatory. Yeah. Wow, that's a beauty. Yep. You want to take this seat, though. You want to butcher it. We're going to we're gonna switch the interior color from uh, black to white. Yep. And also, we're going to get away from the six-way bucket seat to the bench seat. You going with white door trim panels or black? I believe white door panels. Nice. That'll look beautiful. Yeah. Against the plum. And with the, with the uh, long longitudinal white stripe. So your car gets the dash, uh, dash black, black, of course. A pillar moldings and front roof molding black, or do we go white on that? I think I'll go with a, with black on that and black headlining. I think so just, too. Just keeping the door panels and, so and the vinyl seats. Yeah. In white. Yeah. Black seat belts. Yep. Yeah. Now that Mark has seen uh, the palette of parts that we went through, I think he's going to find it really helpful and useful, and and uh, make it go quicker for getting the car done. Which I'm always on him for getting Cindy's car done. I may send you a steering column, also. Oh. And oh, you have one done? Yeah. Power steering? A power steering, but it's not a column shift, so, but you everything else is done nice on it. collars, so. Yeah, but I figured you could at least take, I could give you new collars, and then you could take the ignition switch out oh, of this also, car, so it, it matches, matches for the, the locks, key. yeah. Yeah. Okay. One thing I'm challenged is the AC stuff. I think I'm gonna have NOS belts for it, but uh, as far as the AC hoses and lines, you're gonna have to get I'm them restored. I'm gonna send that back to, okay. to Classic Air and they'll just redo everything. But yeah, oh, it's gonna be a beautiful car. Cindy, you're gonna have a gorgeous car. Yeah, she'll be happy. This guy made it happen. Well, he was a functioning part of making it happen. Yeah, Let's it's face Walmart. It. If not, the dream maker. Me, I don't dream maker. Well, now you're just getting silly. <laughs> <laughs> they make bigger halos. <laughs> Right now, we're getting ready to lay the stripe out on this. It was supposed to be done ahead of time, but Mark Hill hid the build sheet from me, so I had no clue that it got a stripe. He thought it'd be funny to hide it from me. So I really had nothing to go off of, because originally we were supposed to paint this white and then uh, go back, mask the white, uh, the white off, do the blue. So we're doing it a little backwards, but that's all right. Getting taken care of now. Yeah, well, we need a lock on that door. <laughs> Seriously, we just need a lock. What you, uh, what you doing there, buddy? Don't mind if I You're just drop in the stripe. These stripes are kind of complicated to do. The execution's easy, but it's just a, ma a matter of measuring it over and over and over again. Once you do that and you've double checked it two or three times, uh, then you're ready to move on to the paint process and it's all good from there. Putting the stripe on that you should have put on when you first painted it? That wasn't my fault. That was your fault. The broadcast sheet was there and you decided on your own and you'd play some kind of little game. I don't. I know thing. what you wanted to do. You wanted to buy it in vinyl and make me put it on. Well, we do things OEM around this place. Well, then we better start all over again. Then. Okay, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, maybe well, with your paintwork. Work. Well, maybe you should tell me the thing gets a stripe. Is I that what I should do? It's on the broadcast sheet, buddy. You hid the broadcast sheet. The crookedness in the stripe, are you trying to emulate somebody on the they assembly line? They taper in like the bottom. Drunk? They taper in. Um, my question would be, how do you know exactly where that goes? Because I already know. That's not right, I can assure you that. It shouldn't that, get down I, right Did here. I say it was done? Did I say, Mark, hey, come check? Did I even ask no. you to come in for that? Just, would it be of any help if I were to have the original engineer's drawings? No, but I'm sure you do and you're going to show me anyway, so. No, no, I don't have to do that. Okay. I don't have to do that at all. Just give me a moment. See, Go to my online no, database. I, I, I just told you I don't need them. Let's see if I can hit that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I keep on, little Tony D'Agostino wrote me, it's cute. Oh, so, okay. He's hungry. So that's Tony. No, no, Tony, oh, we're going. Tony. Yeah, this I, got, I got time. Tony. I got time for this. I said this. Tony wrote me no, on I, Facebook. I got time for this, I didn't realize. You know what you should do every time I make a point? You I should just, scream over the top I of me. I didn't realize, like circus, no, it's fine. Like a circus no. animal. Tony kind of saved the day again. He emailed Mark and sent him all the exact measurements. So Mark pulled it up on his phone, gave me those dimensions, and then I just went off of that. Would you like me to uh, sign off on this before you actually spray it out? You're just willing to go ahead. Okay, no problem, because you'll be repainting the whole car if you screw it up. I'm not gonna screw it up. Okay. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. I'll see you later. That's why they call me the cat man.
Now see, now don't really follow him. Just quit, quit filming, because this is where he likes to start popping in. Yep, see, wait. He... This color is Spinnaker White, and the paint coat is W1. It's a creamy white. Uh, when you first spray it, it looks like it's really, really off, but once you unmask the car and look at it, it's, it is a creamy white, but it's not as noticeable once you get the blue on it. Right now, we got all the uh, paint work done on the stripe. So Morning, the assembly buddy. side of the shop needs it really quick, so I'm gonna wet sand yeah. it once it gets over there. I can do that at any time and let them start putting this car together. Looking good, huh? Yeah. Gotta get got it done, out. nice. Yeah. Gotta get it out of here. And get oh, it I like there. it. I love the white. See, that's not a bright white. No, it looks great. You don't mind if I just take a quick look at you? There's nothing to look at, it's a stripe. You're ridiculous. Well, what's that then? Right there, right there. I haven't cut and buffed it yet. I know. I've just got it painted so we can get over there. I know. Justin can it looks, oh. Oh, what? What's that little critter right there? That looks like an original mark. Yeah, and it'll wipe off. I like it. Would you like to compare this to an original one? No. So I'm going to go ahead I and would. <laughs> Cousin Dougie, you got a copy. I have a Dougie just pull that around. Can I try your head on? Copy of what? <laughs> Not a copy of anything, man. I just wanted to know if you were uh, over there and available. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. I'm kind of busy, though. Yeah, that's okay. Um, I got a 1970 Dodge Challenger RTSE, top banana yellow, parked up against the building out back. Would you be a lamb's fry? and get the Stringo and bring that into the paint shop for me? Uh, I'll see if I can find it. Here's a clue. It's the only top banana yellow RTSE 383 automatic with a black bumblebee. Uh, that should narrow it down for me. Thank you. I'll go see if I can find it. You know, bringing another car into compare is always great uh, if you're going to do it before you do the paintwork. Uh, so at this point, it really doesn't matter. So in my eyes, it's just a complete waste of time. Can you dance? No. Let me guess. Oh boy. Oh, hello, cousin Dougie. Hi, cousin Mark. I found a yellow Challenger with a black stripe on the rear end. <laughs> that's okay. Um, that's the one. <laughs> okay. But do you want me to bring it around? Yeah, I want you to bring it around if you don't mind, and park it inside the uh, the paint and body shop area. Do you remember where that's at? See if I can find it. Yeah. It's on the north side of the building. Okay, I'll try to find that. I'll be right there, put you down. Yeah, take your time. You know, here's my problem with Dougie. Something's wrong with him in the learning world, right? But you have to be nice because my mom loves him. Everybody loves Cousin Dougie. Doug's great. He's got a heart of gold. I love the guy to death. He's truly family here. As Mark says, not all the dogs are barking with that guy, but he's a great guy and I love him to death. But not everybody has to spend 10 hours a day right. repeating themselves. Right. 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 We're going to have him pull that car in and take a little look. It doesn't matter. Match it up against it an doesn't. OEM one. You, you get... You gave me the specs to do this car, so yeah. there's nothing to match it up to. Well, I'm not sure you hit the specs. I hit the specs. Oh, boy. Yeah, Doug. I found a big green door next to a brown building on idiot. the back of the shop. <laughs> You're an idiot. Yes, it's the one facing north. It's the big door. Yeah, but I'm facing south. Like, I don't care what direction you're facing. I'm just telling you that the door that you need to open up and come into faces to the north. It's the only door on the building that faces to the north. Well, there's no handle on the door. I can't. It's an electric door, Doug. I can open it for you if you want to honk when you get around. Thank you. I'll honk when I get there. <laughs> yeah, you honk. See what I'm saying? It's your cousin. You can't pick your family. Okay, it looks to me like Will did a good job on it. Uh, I'm not passing judgment. I'd like to pull the original paint car inside and match it up. Just make sure that it has the same gap, the same widths, the same height, the same length, if it wraps and descends and does all the things that the factory one does. So I'm just doing my job, making sure he does his job. Hey, Mark. Yeah, Doug. Yeah, Dougie. 
Uh, I tried to honk the horn in the car, but it doesn't work at all. There's no battery in the car, Doug. <laughs> oh, well, how am I gonna honk? Probably use the one on the Stringo. It's the one I was thinking. Oh, the Stringo has a horn? Right. Does this mean you're close? Yeah, I'm at the door. Ace. Hey. Hey. There's a horn. There's a horn. Hey, Mark, it doesn't have a horn. It works, too. Uh, gotta open the door, Doc. Hey. Hi, Doug. <laughs> Come, Come on, on in. I will. I'm hey, Mark. Doug. I got Nuggy. I found the horn button. Yeah. It works pretty good. Yeah. You have any cousins? I do, but not like that. Yeah. I don't know how many people have cousins like that. But you can't pick your family. So. But he's got a heart of gold. Absolutely, he does. Brain's mush. His brain is mush? Oh, that's right. All the dogs aren't barking, huh, Doug? What? Are you, right. guys, <laughs> you guys picking on me or what? No. Not you're at all. doing. No. You're doing great, Dougie. Me, would you? I no. love you, Dougie. I you're love doing you too, fine. Mark. You can. Y'all. Y'all can go back to work now. Copy that. I'm right here, man. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> Do you want my walkie-talkie? No, I don't. I don't want to contact with any of you. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Doug. Thank will. You. Now, if it's at all fair to you, that line's a little squiggly. It's not crooked, you know. This one's a little wonky, too. Look how narrow it gets right here. Between oh, yeah, the does. accent stripe, real narrow. That's they probably just throw those quarter. things on. Well, they, yeah, yeah they're, they're, just they're doing 1,000 cars a day. Oddly enough, he doesn't have any dirt nibs in his paint. <laughs> hey. Whatever you have to tell yourself, Mark. Well, next time we're doing the broadcast sheet, when you see don't it on even the side start of the with car, the broadcast crap see, because that wasn't around, and you know it. I think yours looks great. I'm just giving you crap. I think I yours like looks it. good. So here isn't a good example of what they look and like. That's what's the great factory. about having these cars. Yep. You know, this all started with the stupid build sheet. Uh, it was never on the car. He went back, put it on. Whatever. He's going to say it was there the whole time, and I'm tired of arguing it. At this point, Justin's waiting to assemble this thing, and he's been waiting for me to get this done. So now that it's done, I'm gonna get it over to him, and he can just go crazy on this and get it ready for the customer. Cindy's car was such a peach that I know it can go through really quick. It didn't need much in the way of that. Right, and I brought out some good parts for it. Absolutely. To, to make your job quicker and easier. Now, are you happy with going through all the parts? You're like a nervous Nelly. Yes, I am. I want to open the package. I want to open the package. I want to open the package. So we got parts. everything opened up. It looks like everything was there. Yeah. Let, the, let me tell you something. You ship. If you're fixing a dent and you don't do it right, guess what? You could redo it again and fix it right. Right. If you lose or damage a part, that's that's not good because it's not e always easy to replace. Yeah. You know you're preaching the choir, right? Yes. And now, are you happy with the situation on your car? I'm happy to see progress. Good. Uh, would have been happy with a little bit more progress, but yeah. it's, it's going. It's You'd going. Be happy if it was done too, right? Oh, of course. Yeah. But we understand. You know, you're busy and can't rush progress unless yeah. it's your own A100 pickup. You know. But uh, so. so if I were to take a detour like you do when you start blabbing about how something isn't right in the car, and and I made one minutia mistake that anybody could make, and, and it doesn't need Mark, called out, and that you, takes time. Mark, your minutia is huge. How you, how, you like the, how you like this minutia, huh? How you like this? You like this? Not sc you scared? Yeah? No. You like that? I'm not looking at the road. You like that, Mary? I think the mannequin in your trunk moved all around.